Hi, Ralph Bus Michigan Honey and Fishing here today. And today I'm going to show you how to plan a trout fishing trip or locate streams and what gear I use out in the field. Um, when I first started trout fishing, I sucked at it. And as you can see from the two videos I posted today, I'm pretty darn good at it. So, the first thing when I was doing, when I was learning how to trout fish, and locating streams on state land and things like that, I went out and I bought a sportsman's guide for Michigan. This is the um, counties, it shows you the counties that this book covers. Um, this book was, I do believe, like 19, 20 bucks, but it is well worth um, the money. As you can see here, it shows all the stuff, GPS grids, area road maps, everything. What I also I did is um, put a page mark. So if I pull over the side of the road, I don't have to flump through a bunch of pages. I open it up. Right here is Grand Traverse County. That's the county I live in. And as you can see in this book, it shows you all the streams, all the big lakes, and things like that. So that's one thing that will help you find your cricks, your streams, and things like that. Get a guidebook. Now you can go one more step bigger. You can go with a Michigan Atlas. And this basically shows you the back roads, the recreational sites, and GPS coordinates. And then once again, I put two bookmarks or page marks. So I can find my page real quick. Open it up. Now this is a little bit different than the guidebook. Okay, the guidebook is basically just a reference. But in the atlas, anything in the green, all this green stuff here, and okay, the green is all state property. This is all right here, all this right here, all this green is state property. Um, right here is Torch Lake, right here is Grand Traverse Bay, West Bay, East Bay, Lake Leonard. It shows you all the lakes. And I'm going to try to zoom up on this for you guys. I don't know how good it's going to work. But also, if you look real close, like right here, you get in view, you can see all the cricks. And there's a lot of cricks that run right through a uh, state property. Um, this right here is actually this right here is actually the north branch of the Boardman River. Anybody in Michigan knows about the Boardman River. Okay, so that's one more route you can go for trout fishing maps to find streams on state land. It's just a regular Michigan atlas. And then the next thing you can do is, I don't know how your DNR office works, but also they have, they will give you plot maps. I have um, Wexford County and Denzi County are the three big counties that are in surrounding Grand Traverse County. So this one here I have marked out, marked out um, some streams. Uh, right here is the Boardman uh, Lake. Right here's the Boardman coming down. Okay, right through there. I mean, right up here. All the way through Ranch Rudolph into the west and east branch. Okay, I'm going to try to do this so you guys can maybe see what I'm talking about. Um, let me see here. Right here. This is the creek I fished this morning. 
and then I went over here onto my property which is right here this little brown dot that's my property and uh, right here's the creek I was fishing uh, anything in dark is state land so that gives you an indicator where the private private property is and where state land is so you don't end up going trespassing fishing somebody else um, somebody else's creek and I've accidentally gone onto people's private property and was fishing and there's a few incidents where they were not very happy there's a few incidents they said yeah you can fish it whenever you want just let me know so you know if you, if you stumble upon somebody's private property and you're fishing it just be nice courteous say you know sir I'm sorry for trespassing on your property and, you know I thought it was state property and then leave it at that okay let's get down to the gear um, right here is the pole I was using today it's uh, made here in Traverse City uh, Grand Traverse Tackle it's a super ultra light graphite pole this is an 8 foot 8 foot rod real sensitive that's what you want and uh, this reel right here is a Shakespeare Intrepid Ultra Light, so it's real light. When you're out trout fishing, you don't want to go out there with a big bass reel on your pole. You want to go as light as you can because it, you're going to be out there for hours. Um, just to catch those two fish this morning, it took me two and a half hours, and I probably walked about six to seven miles. Okay, <clears throat> I need to get moving because I can only do a 15-minute video. And now to give you some kind of idea how let's move this back over how sensitive this pole is, I'm gonna stand back here and try to show you guys. See that tip? How easily that moves? That's what you want when you're trout fishing. This trout don't trout don't want to bite real hard. So that's what you want, real sensitive pole. Okay, so we got our pole down. Let's go to our terminal tackle, such as hooks. Um, right here are the hooks I use. They are Eagle Claw Razor Sharp. Oops, I just dropped one on the Anyways, here, here's my hooks I use. They're, uh, I do believe, a number six hook. Real small. You know, trout don't have a real, real, um, real big mouth. You want to go with a, a number six at least. Right there. Razor sharp, equal claw. I use these for years. I love them. Um, I carry a couple of big, uh, easy snap on um, sinkers for when I'm on the river okay and then over here on this side I carry some um, nymph sprinters for beginning of the season trout love these and then I carry a couple of fly poppers because I know there are a couple of uh, beaver dams that have a lot of trout in them and that's basically comes in this little case and that's basically all the tackle I carry um I guess we'll go with this I carry a multi-tool um just in case my reels or uh, you know scandal comes loose screws start rattling loose or whatever this is my old one I lost my good one today which pretty much sucks but uh, this one will do the trick for getting the uh, hooks out of the trout's mouth. Okay, so those are my players I carry. And I just put them right there on my case and right there on my belt. Um, the next thing I carry is just a small little pocket knife, Gerber. Great sharp quality blade. Just a small Gerber knife. You know, nothing real big. I carry a lighter, I carry a fillet knife, 
just in case um, I ever want to play a fish and cook it right there on the river. Okay. I carry my mora. And then I carry, like I say, sometimes I want to cook my fish or cook a fish for lunch. Um, right here I carry one, two fire steels, and a magnesium block, and a tinder box. Because sometimes I fish, sometimes I fish all the way up until dark, you never know when you're going to get lost in the woods, so I'd rather be prepared for a survival situation and a fishing situation. Uh, I carry my Nokia camera, just in case I want to take some pictures of some wildlife. Uh, I also take with me my pro light glasses. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy a real expensive pair. These were like at Walmart for like 16, 16 bucks, and they work great. You know, I'd rather buy a cheap pair because they're going to get scratched up, beat up in the woods. Then, I don't carry a tape measure. I did this morning because I forgot my fish bag, but something to measure your fish. In the state of Michigan, your brookies have to be 7 inches or longer. Your browns have to be 8 or longer. And then I carry my uh, tackle bag. I mean, not tackle bag, my fish bag. I have a rag connected to it. Because trout, as you know, are fairly slippery and slimy. And then, as you can see, this trout bag has plenty of use to it. And it has a tape right, uh, measure right there. And as you can see inside, it's almost time to replace it. So, that's about covers everything I take with me. Um, trout fishing. Oh, and my, my uh, camo fanny pack which I put all my gear and hooks in and everything right in here. It just uh, clips on. Now I carry extra SD cards, I carry my camera, I carry my camcorder in here, my bait, my hooks, all the knives I've shown you. Uh, I carry a flashlight and that all fits right in here, goes around my waist, throw my uh, fish bag over my shoulder grab my ride, stop and grab my two dozen of crawlers, and then I'm all set. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, hope you learned a little bit about trout fishing and taking the steps to find your cricks and how to identify private property from state property. And I hope you guys have a great time fishing. And uh, I'm going to go fishing tomorrow and do part two of this uh, two-part series of this video uh, tomorrow. I'm going to go out and shoot how to break down a stream and how to fish it. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy all my videos. And I'd like to thank my 59 subscribers. I really appreciate you guys viewing my videos and leaving comments and things like that. And I think when I hit uh, 100 subscribers or maybe I might do it at 60, maybe at 80, I'm going to do a giveaway. I think and I got some pretty good ideas what I'm going to do for that giveaway and uh, so uh, that's about it so uh, it's like 12 o'clock at night here and now I'm going to bed since this long ass video is over and I apologize for making it so long but you know there's a lot that goes into trout fishing and you guys are going to find out more about it tomorrow so uh, please like subscribe to my channel comment, uh, got any questions about trout fishing, uh, send them my way. I don't mind answering them. Thank you.